So I've had a few requests for, for a little bit more information on the on the grenadier, and so I'm going to try and cover as many of those things as I can today. <laughs> hey, buddy, what's up? Sorry, you'll have to excuse that. I'm a dad. Let my kids come first. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to flip the camera around and uh, try and get into these things. So I believe I'd show this earlier. Um, Pop the hood, one pull, two pull, and that opens it up. Let's get in there. All right, there we go. Okay, so the first thing was uh, the air filter setup. Uh, given I've got the raised air intake i'm gonna try and see if i can look in there it's all vaulted and it's hard to hard to really get in i will be uh i will be back at the dealer um in a couple of days and i, I can ask for you I'll hopefully get some more information i'm sorry I'm, I'm just not not skilled enough to to take it apart myself because, I mean, it looks very different to my 200. I'm not entirely sure. And I don't want to meddle with what I don't know right now. But yeah, so that's the engine bay. I'll give you a nice shot there. And um, this is the Trial Master Edition. So it's got, I haven't seen any other badging. It's just this one right here. I do think the wipers need to be replaced. I. I you know, they're all right, but there's better better options aftermarket. So I'll probably do that. Uh, I wanted to show you uh, the auxiliary battery setup. So I got this all wired in. That's the auxiliary uh, switch panel. Apart from that, hold on. Let me just climb in. <clears throat> so the first part of the panel is um, all your interior stuff. is just basically lighting. Um, there is one inconvenient thing, which is this guy. I think I pointed that out in my last review. This is for the high beam as the spots. You've got the headlight adjuster there. That's great. It works great. It moves effortlessly. Um, emergency assistance, downhill control. You got your, uh, front and rear lockers. You got the center locker right there. It's nice that it's a proper chunky shifter. It's not electronic, it's manual, mechanical. Off-road mode basically turns off all your sensors, um, the parking, uh, the park assist and, and start-stop. It even turns off uh, the seatbelt warning, which is fantastic when you're in a park, in a national park. Uh, waiting mode turns off the fan so you can protect that. And then this is the auxiliary lighting. I still have to figure out the the location of all of them but my understanding is that it's left right yeah okay i need to look into that i'm not sure but obviously this is the winch one the 500 amp and the rest are probably various types of lights so i do have lights coming in um you got battery power here which is cool that you can you can keep the auxiliary battery running even when the vehicle is switched off and then I'll, I'll walk back to show you over here. You've got park assist off. So that's that's also awesome in case you're not off-roading, but you still want to turn it off. I generally have it on um, for the city. It's useful, especially with such a bulky car and still getting used to its dimensions. Um, I talked about the climate control earlier. It's it's great. It works fine. Window demist, haven't used yet. Uh, start, stop. This is cool. So you can turn it off. Um, you know, we're not used to having start stop on our vehicles here it's a good thing um but it's also a bit irritating and I'm, I'm not sure about the impact on the engine with a diesel so i i generally keep that turned off um but it can be useful when you're stuck in traffic all right so that's that's that part um i will i will now take you to the to the auxiliary battery and well both batteries Oh crap. Right. 
so the car is fully loaded. Here's a full-size adult, right? I mean, this guy's huge. I'll show you properly. Right. So that guy's as big as any any full-size, in fact, bigger than a full-size adult. The video doesn't do justice to how big he is. And he fits fine. Um, two really big car seats. There's the leg room. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not great if your, your feet are over here, but then again, I don't think anybody sits with their feet together. You, you'd be like this. And if you're like this, then you got plenty of space. Um, so I don't think that's a problem, but let me, let me, let me get all the seats out. Let me get, um, sad Sam out and then, and then I'll show you the batteries. All right. So. Here's the battery setup, and this is just a simple lift off. You just pull it out, comes right off. Um, so you got the main and auxiliary batteries, and then you've got the smart pass, which keeps the auxiliary charged. It keeps everything running perfectly well. In fact, at some point, I'll show you um, how awesome the ignition is. It's like, you know, not even a quarter kick, it, and, the, and the vehicle is turned on. Um, I want to show you something on the other side. <laughs> For car seats, they're super comfortable, eh? Honestly, they're brilliant, um, as as would be expected. Anyway, so you got the Smart Pass here. There is space here, so um, I'm looking to 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 fabricate a base plate. And then I will add a SeaTech 250. I think it's called a D250 SE or whatever. Basically the one that allows you, so it piggybacks, they, they connect to each other here um, and it allows you to then use solar power for when you're parked or stationary at a camp or whatever for a long period of time. Um, I've got the panels already. I'm gonna use uh, non-permanent ones, so foldable simply because I can then use them with a mobile power pack. Uh, but yeah, so that's happening here. I'm going to figure out the dimensions. They bolt on. It, it would need to bolt on onto this, this housing here and connect the two together. I've seen it done. It's going to work. Uh, I just need to get the unit. Um, so yeah, that's the rear seats. Just simple fold down. It's done. Need to, yeah, so this is a bit annoying. You, know, you got to pull the seat belts in. I mean, the buckle, the, the, what is it called? Where it clips into, you gotta pull these out. And that one goes right there. And then you can drop this guy in. It's not rocket science, but there you go. Just not used to doing it. So that's done. Um, I took off the covers from my 200 obviously you can see they don't fit so i'm gonna have those custom done at some point next week and i will just show you this real quick check this out i don't know if this is normal or just because i'm coming from a different vehicle but right like straight up and i love that uh, so I've shown you all the lights and stuff, this panel. I've uh, engineered my own temporary solution, given that I'm the only African who doesn't like the sun. It's not entirely effective, but it does the job for now. Um, so that's pretty much everything. I got a nifty little bottle from my dealer, who is awesome. Ooh, it's an automotive. Um, fire extinguisher at the front, passenger, put in some temporary additional mats because I'm getting the car ceramic coated on Friday. So interior and exterior. So I'm trying to protect it as much as I possibly can um, so that I don't spend the entire day getting that done. Fuel. So I went to the gas station and the guy just couldn't figure out how to get in. Uh, so there you go, neither can I. It's just a simple push. No lock on it, but it does lock when uh, you centrally lock the vehicle. Uh, apart from that, oh, there is something. Uh, so if, if the vehicle doors are, the driver door is open and you put it into gear, 
it won't move. It'll come right back to you until you shut that door. So on day one, I thought there was a problem with the vehicle because every time I put it into drive, it would stall. But then I figured out that it was the door and I just don't know what I'm doing. I'll show you quickly some suspension components. I don't know how they've tuned this, but I can tell you it just eats up rough roads, especially rough tarmac, which isn't easy to do. All right, that's it. Uh, thank you. Goodbye.